Hello friends, and today we shall discuss the facet grids in Seaborn. So let's just uh, rename our new Jupyter Notebook as Facet Grids in Seaborn and understand what are they. First, we'll start with importing basic libraries and we'll import the plotting library Seaborn as FNS and I'll also import Matplotlib. This is also a plotting library on which Seaborn is being built. So let's just import both. Now what we are going to do, we are going to work with one of the data sets in Seaborn itself as we have discussed earlier. And today we will work with exercise data set. So in a Seaborn, this is already being preloaded. So I'll just uh, load this data set and I'll tell SNS to load the data set. Which data set I want? I want exercise data set. And we have seen how do we really explore all the data sets in Seaborn. I'll tell you that link in the description box or then provide it in the end of this video. So what I do is in a data frame, I just this, um, load this data set called exercise and let's see the first five entries of this data. So I have got this something called ID, unnamed, diet, pulse, time and kind. So I can see that I have really got this diet, pulse, time and kind, kind of exercise, time you spend in exercise, the pulse rate, you know, and the diet, what diet you have. Let's just check the last entries also if you want by tail. And you see that you've got some exercise called running also and your time again, like 15 minutes, 30 minutes. And your pulse rate increases to like 150 and you've got low fat and no fat here and your id also like increases okay so now what next we're not gonna go ahead with more data analysis but we'll go strictly towards like facet grids okay so what happens here is in facet grids i have to draw rows and columns. So this happens, The what does facet grid does? It draws data set into multiple rows and columns, you know, it just gives you multiple axes in which you can draw your data set. So let's just, I'll, I'll, help, I'll explain you with the help of this data set itself. So what we do is we just plot one data set, okay? And let's do some basic data set here. So what I do is in G, I will write here SNS dot. This is what I give to set a structure, give structure to my facet grid. And I just set this and I want it to go to my data frame. And suppose I just give row. And in this row, suppose I take, suppose I take kind, what kind, okay. And I specify this kind here. And what I do is I tell it to plot it. Let's see what happens. So this facet grid just gave me three rows specifying the kind. What kind? We have seen that means there are three kinds. So if you want to just check your kind, what you do is simply just go and write here kind. And you can check here by specifying value counts. We have covered this in previous videos. Value counts. So you can see that there are three three types of or uh, three kind of exercise like running walking and resting and there are 30 values in each right okay so we've seen here that that's why it has created three rows what if if i give it some column and in column suppose i give it time okay and let's see what it does okay so again it has set three columns that means for time again, I have got some three values and let's check this, this bit time again. So what I do is I will just in place of time, kind I will write time. So you see that the time also has got some 1 minute, 15 minutes and 30 minutes and each type has like 30 values each. So if you want to just simply check how many values are there, unique values with time, so you can just check it bit dot unique yes okay 
So you got here that there are three objects in this, like one minute, five minutes, fifteen minutes, and thirty minutes. That's why you've got three columns here, right? And you've got three rows. So this has laid down the structure of my initial facet grid. So this is the basic workflow to initialize my facet grid. Now, how do I fill? How do I see various things and plots in this this facet grid? So for that, I have to specify something called G dot map, all right? So I have to give here, I have to map it now, and I have to specify one plot here, right? So these plots could be anything. So I just do with scatter first. Let's see the scatter plot. I'm using plt dot scatter. And what do I want to see in scatter? I want to see the pulse rate because this there is one. I have to specify x and y here because scatter takes two bivariate analysis. So I will specify like pulse and diet. So let's see what happens. Okay. All right. So I got my facet grid and I got scatter plot plotted in this facet grid. Now let's examine this okay so this is the diet which is being plotted on the y-axis as low fat and no fat so i've got two types of diets that means low fat and no fat and the kind is rest that means the kind of exercise is rest for one minute 15 minutes and 30 minutes and it is showing me the diet undertaken and the pulse rate so you can see just check the pulse rate here it is 80 and it has been plotted like 80, 100, 120, and 140. So this is where you can see. Now suppose I have to, if I set this share x as, let's check, check one more feature here. I set this share x as false. What happens here is that now I don't have to scroll down below to see the pulses. I, 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 I just simply can see it in individual plot. So I see here that when the kind is rest and perform for one minute for a low fat diet the pulse rate is 80. For a no fat diet the pulse is however higher. Okay and similarly you can interpret it for like the kind is rest and the time for 15 minutes for a no fat diet the pulse rate is around more than 80 but less than 85 let's see what happens with walking when you're walking for say 30 minutes your pulse rate is somewhere around for a no fat diet 90 to 93 something okay and when you are supposed running then your pulse rate is the highest no greater than 120 for 30 minutes you can compare it for 15 minutes you can compare it for one minute so this is what the facet grid is doing and these plots are also called multiple subplots or small multiple graphics these are also called as sterols lattice lattice and one more thing which we can one more thing that i can just show you is experimenting with different plots here and another feature called hue so let's just see what happens okay now let's experiment something with you and okay i would experiment with you here itself let's just take this g equals to i'll take the same same figure here and let's just explain the difference between hue and plotting with columns and rows and what i do is i simply just copy pasted this and here i have taken row as suppose time and now I am not taking column here, okay? I am not specifying column here. And what I do is I simply write here hue. And this hue, let this hue be let's just change this axis, okay? And in row, let's take time. So I'm taking time, that means I know I have got three rows here. In hue, suppose I take suppose uh, kind, what kind of exercise you are performing, what amount of time, and I gave a hue order also so that I understand what it is giving me and hue order I gave it in a form of a 
every list and this is rest and walking right by default also this is the set as the same way and running right okay and just let me have the share xr scores let me show you what does this gives me okay yeah Ah. and here also okay so now you see this facet grid with time as plotted in rows and hue is kind so i can just tell you this okay this is not interpreted running because i have misspelled this and now let's see okay so i got this something like this Okay, and if you want to see it something, some more with more colors, you can set the palette palette as suppose spring. You can set, all right, or any any other palette of your choice, and give it a comma. Okay, so here we get this thing, and this is how the hue order is. This dark color is for rest. This this orange color is for walking, and this yellow color is for running. And you can see here that in different rows I have got time. So the for row one I have got for one minute the time and the diet specified as no fat and low fat and the pulses, the pulse rate. So I can see that for no fat diet, if I even you know do exercise for one minute, my pulse rate is quite high as compared to a low fat diet. So I'm good if I am having a no fat diet because then the heart doesn't have to really work that much hard, you know, because here the heart is really pumping hard enough the blood to your lungs and muscles when you exercise a lot. And you can see here in this 30 minute exercise with no fat, so you are you are more likely to burn more fat and stay healthy when you are on a no fat diet. And that's why it is recommended because your pulse rate also high. You have got more oxygen circulation in your in your body. Your heart works, pumps well, and you're healthy. So you can see the pulses pulse rate the high for the snow fat diet as compared to a low fat diet for the same amount of time. Right now, if you want to compare the exercise, okay. So this was about only. I'm getting three information here: the diet, the pulse rate, and the time but i am getting the kind of information for what kind of exercises is this with hue this provides me an another dimension you know this gives a third variable without need of having adding columns here right as i did before what happens is if i just remove this hue right and i give this palette and what happens i give this column okay just check this Suppose if I just do this, what happens? I'll just show you. We got this, something like this. Okay, both are same. I have to change the column as kind. Yeah. So now you see this? Okay. So this is what happens when you really do not specify hue, you get it in different rows and columns because i have specified column here instead of hue so to make it more representative and it depends upon you with whatever feature you want to use so i'm using here hue and not column just to just specify everything in just one single simple graph and i show you all the four information here the pulse rate the diet the time and the kind of exercise here right okay another thing which we can we can experiment is with the plot is suppose I take a simple plot called bar plot okay I have this now let's do it again just copy paste this so that you don't have to write it again and again and here let's just take your bar plot and I will take from SNS I will take this plot and I tell SNS to plot bar plot and I give here pulse and diet 
and let palette be cubelic. We can set any palette. Okay. So this is what you got, right? And this is your bar plot with SNS. So you can see here with low fat and with no fat diet for one minute the count this is the frequency of the count for this no fat and low fat diet and this is how you interpret now suppose I don't want this hue I just want to specify the column and now let's see what happens okay so now you can see this and what you do is instead of here just write here palette as suppose magma if I take all right a simple bar graph all right and we have specified this map for the plotting function and this is what I got as a bar plot and this is specifying the time the kind of exercise and the diet undertaken okay and this bar plot is basically for categorical plots which are non numeric in nature and these are being plotted and I get the pulse rates also here so when you're exercising for more hours for more time your pulse rate definitely is going to increase your heart is pumping faster than usual to give you more oxygen supply to your lungs and muscles needing for more oxygen and hence you're likely to lose weight and also this has been seen here that a no fat diet is better than a low fat diet if you really want to lose your weight guys so we can just plot this data and we can see how really we can infer information from this and this is what the facet grid does it shows you tons and loads of information in a simple single graph and we can see here with, by plotting rows and columns also if you want you can specify you here if you want a third variable if we had here only like six like variables and we use these four basically diet pulse time and kind and if suppose you had more variables you could have, have experimented with that too right so we experimented with this and we have seen the facet grids how it really works. So that's it for this video and thanks for watching.